All right, guys, the Utah Jazz had a big trade day. Let's talk about it. Were they good trades? Were they bad? Let's see. All right, guys, we're just going to get right into this with the Jazz game coming up. I wanted to get a quick live reaction of these trades for the Utah Jazz. There were two trades that the Jazz did, and let's just bring this up and talk about both. So first, we have the Simone Fontecchio trade that happened uh, the night before, I believe. And it was this was posted by Woj. Uh, actually, was it? It was yesterday, yes. So the Utah Jazz are trading Simone Fontecchio to the Detroit Pistons for a 2024 second round pick. Sources tell ESPN. Uh, this was kind of a surprise. It came up quickly. At least we didn't see a lot of rumors for Simone Fontecchio until very, you know, recently. We see this happen. We saw, I wrote a rumor the day before this trade happened about Simone Fontecchio, and that came from Tony Jones. So he obviously was getting some intel from inside the jazz front office or wherever he gets his intel from. And then literally that, that night he puts out the article that morning, it looks like 1107 AM, the jazz trade Fontecchio. Now this was at this point, a lot of jazz fans did not know what was going on. I mean, Simone Fontecchio seems like a player they would like to have for the long term. He was a rookie with the jazz. He's a restricted free agent next year. And I think this trade, what this trade tells you is that the jazz are thinking long term, but how are they thinking long term if they're trading one of the players they drafted? Uh, right here we see they get Kevin Knox, a 2024 second round pick that is going to be from the Wizards. So that's like what, pick 32 in this draft? Basically, and I talked about this on Bleacher Report. If you haven't seen it, we did. A, I did a stream on Bleacher Report. I actually have three more coming up. So make sure you have the Bleacher Report app and you can hear me talk about it. But the biggest goal for this Jazz team this coming offseason is what? It's re-sign Lowry Markkinen, right? And someone like Simone Fontecchio, who is a wing, is is going to get money on the market. You see here where uh, Woj, Woj says, Fontecchio raised a three-point percentage from 33 to 39 this season for the Jazz, where he started 34 games this season. And we saw the Jazz winning games with Simone Fontecchio at the wing, playing good defense too as well. He's got size. He shoots 39% from three. He's a solid NBA player. And so he was going to get offers this offseason. And with it being restricted free agency, that was going to kind of handcuff the Jazz. And I'm sure that the Jazz on the trade market found that there were a lot of teams, which Tony Jones reported, there were a lot of teams interested in Fontecchio, Zach Lowe as well. And it was very clear they were probably going to have some issues giving him a contract and then also signing Lowry Markkinen and then also doing the other thing that this does is open up minutes for their younger players to play. Now, I don't think Bryce Sensabaugh is going to be starting for the Jazz here anytime soon, but this certainly gives him an avenue to start playing a little bit more. The other thing I considered with this trade was, well, what does this happen to the starting unit? I started thinking, well, the Jazz honestly don't really have a wing and so this, you know, that can fill that spot. They do get um, in the, you're right, Key himself, $2. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. Kira leaves fingerprints on charcoal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Key. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate the $2. Anyways. <laughs> Key, Key is, do you just try to throw me off every time, Key? Do you just try to send me? The <laughs> you're always trying to just throw me off. Uh, and successfully, uh, once again, anyways, what this does is it obviously will give Bryce Ensabaugh, but I actually was thinking, and I don't know if they've announced the starting lineup for tonight, which is the first game for the Jazz with, you know, their new look Jazz. I think it really opens up minutes for Walker Kessler. Well, why is that? Well, because I think it's going to force them to put Lowry Markinen at the three. You're probably starting John Collins at the four and playing Walker Kessler at the five. And then you're probably having a pretty quick substitution where you start playing, you know, Keontae George and Taylor Hendricks and things like that and start getting a lot more lineups. So it's going to be really interesting. Uh, basically, this is a move to help you sign Lowry Markkinen. You avoid a contract issue in the offseason and it will open up time for 
uh, more of the young players to play. I think Bryce Sensabaugh and Keontae George and Taylor Hendricks are the biggest benefactors of all this, which is what the Jazz want. All right, the second trade happens today. The Utah Jazz are finally finalizing a trade to send Kelly Olynyk and Ochai Abaji to the Toronto Raptors for Kira Lewis, Otto Porter, and a 2024 first round pick. Now, I know... You know, we've heard Kira Luce's name talked about in the draft. I don't know a lot about what's been going on with him. He is obviously a player the Jazz will look at and bring in. I don't think he's going to get a lot of minutes. He was not getting a lot of minutes on New Orleans or Toronto. So I don't know if he's going to get that on the Jazz. The Jazz likely want to make sure that they're giving minutes to Taylor Hendricks and Keontae George. And this absolutely does it. Now, I'm surprised that Ochai Baji went. I mean, that was kind of a surprise to me. But there's some things we got to think about with Ochai Baji. I I love the athleticism with Ochai Abaji. I love the idea of him being a 3 and D wing, but we've talked about this before. Is the idea of Ochai Abaji better than the reality of Ochai Abaji? The idea of Ochai Abaji is these athletic, he's an athletic wing that locks people down. He's got that incredible corner three-point percentage, and maybe he can turn into just like a lights-out three-point shooter that defends and does all these things, uh, great in transition, all these things. Well, what is what are the stats, actually? This season, he's shooting 33% from three, uh, 42% from the field, you know, and he's had opportunities this year. Key himself, another $2. Thank you, my man. Sexton Clarkson, Lowry, Collins, Walker tonight. I called it. Thank you, Key. $2 and you support what I said. There you go. I figured that this will actually... Oh my gosh. Should I pat myself on the back? Probably not. My my arms are too short. Uh, anyways, Ochai Baji is what he is different than the idea of him. We've talked about this before. I talked to you about my bad girlfriend in college. Where I was, I was like, why I should go date this girl. We dated for like six months. It was like the worst six months of my life because the idea of dating her was better than the reality. It was terrible. It was horrible. I was sad all the time. It's where I came up with the, by the way, if you want some dating advice here, are you sad 80% of the time? Your ratio has to be good. Are you happy 80% of the time, at least minimum with the person you're with? If not you likely should be breaking up with that person, right? If you're if you're not happy at least 80% of the time with someone, time to start thinking about going solo, all right? And I think that's kind of the case here with Ochai Baji. And that's what happened with their relationship. Eventually it was over and I felt free and easy. <laughs> Married the love of my life. All right, anyways, Ochai Baji. He is shooting 33% from three. It's not good enough, right? And he's scared to shoot him. He's only taking how many per game? I mean, this isn't showing us. Uh, let's go into the, let's see. Like, look at these last five games. He's taking two shots a game in how many minutes? Like 10 to 15 minutes per game? You know, it's not enough. And we've been waiting for him to put up more. And it's just not really been there. If you look at this season, the numbers have been just, everything's trending down. Goes from 35% from three last year to 33. He goes from... Let's see, he stays just the same field goal. I guess technically went down, but that's almost identical field goal percentage. And we saw in Summer League that it just was not, it was pretty underwhelming. Pretty underwhelming. Uh, Key himself, James is Mormon, so he never gets none. Absolutely. I'm not going to touch that at all. But I do appreciate the $2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. But anyways, here, let's go to here. Um... Look at these. There's a lot of zeros here in steals. For someone who's supposed to be a really good defender, not a lot of steals going there. All right? Uh, assists, not a lot. Not a lot. I know he gets some blocks, but look, a lot of zeros. You know? Not a lot of rebounds for someone so athletic. 1-1-1, one, 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 are you kidding? And this is with pretty decent minutes. 17 minutes and you're putting up a 1-1-1 one, one, one stat line, 0 for 3. For, I mean, at a certain point, you're just not... You're just not producing at a level you need to to get more minutes. And the Jazz have Bryce Sensabaugh on the bench, who is probably not as good as a defender as Ochai Abaji is, but he is definitely going to get more buckets as he gets it figured out. And the Jazz just have to give these guys minutes. Because, by the way, they now have two picks in this 2024 draft. By the way, that's something we thought about. The Jazz want to convey the OKC pick, and that's something I was telling you. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what the Jazz want to do. They're trying to convey the pick to OKC while also probably bringing some players back in because there's a little bit of, there's a lot of hints at 
out here of what the Jazz are going to do next season, especially with all the players we knew that were available. Colin Sexton was available. Jordan Clarkson was available. And that was in multiple reports from multiple reporters, right? Now, the trades didn't happen. We predicted Jordan Clarkson going to the Knicks. We did not realize just how stupid the Detroit Pistons are. The Detroit Pistons are incredibly dumb. They trade Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks for second round pick. Are you kidding? And Utah got... Utah traded Kelly Olynyk for a first, and they can't get a first for that from the Knicks, who have many of them? They couldn't do it? Remarkably stupid from the Detroit Pistons, and so we, that's something you couldn't predict. Otherwise, if the Detroit Pistons aren't dumb, Jordan Clarkson's probably on the Knicks right now, 100%. You know, and we even heard multiple reports. I think Tony Jones was reporting that they're they're still interested. So it may happen this offseason. We'll sh we shall see. But we know that those two were available and probably going. Uh, <laughs> I'm James the Mormon, but I'm not the James the Mormon. All right. But if you want to call me James the Mormon, there you go. My rap is what are what are what are what are what are the Detroit Pistons doing? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, remarkably dumb, but we did predict Kelly Olenek getting traded. That did happen. I was surprised at Fontecchio and I was surprised at Ochai Abaji. but the same thing goes for Ochai Abaji. Ochai Abaji and Simone Fontecchio, both restricted free agents, probably getting offers. I'm not hundred percent on Ochai Abaji. I want to hurry up on this because I do got to, we've got a game coming up. Um, but let's just look. Ochai Abaji contract. I bet the Jazz were not super interested in. Look at this. They had a uh, they had a chance to exercise the option, and then at some point they get a restricted free agent. I don't think the Jazz were all that impressed, right? They just weren't impressed enough. Otherwise, they don't do this trade. And so, you know what? They're probably pretty interested in seeing Bryce Sensabaugh get some minutes. And that will be interesting. All right, guys. So we've got the game tonight. I'm gonna do another post on this, probably a draft trade grades and so on make sure if you're a jazz fan you like and subscribe to the channel we talk about the jazz every game plus more like and subscribe i will talk to you next